Welcome to this service of worship on this uh, Christmas Eve, this most holy of nights. We are delighted to join together as we celebrate the birth of the Christ child. Will you stand as we share in the greeting? Welcome to this most holy night when angels and shepherds mingle and the birth of a baby changes the world. We come to celebrate the joy Celebrate the light that shines all around us. Let us kneel before the Christ child who makes God's promises come true. Our hymn of worship is hymn number 234, verses 1 through 3. We gather to celebrate the birth of the one who is the light of the world. We are here to worship God and his son, Jesus Christ, born this night in Bethlehem of Judea. We light the candle of hope to remind us of the promises made by all the prophets that God would raise up a savior for his people, Israel, and through him bless all the nations. Let the heavens and the earth rejoice. Our Lord has come. We light the candle of peace to remind us that the Prince of Peace came to enlighten those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Let the heavens and the earth rejoice. Our Lord has come. We light the candle of joy to remind us that the Lord has made known his salvation and that grace is poured out upon us. Let the heavens and the earth rejoice. Our Lord has come. We light the candle of love to remind us that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him might have eternal life. Let the heavens and the earth rejoice. Our Lord has come. 
we light the Christ candle to celebrate and rejoice that the light of the world is born this night. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. You, O Lord, have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. He is called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Glory be to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to all people of goodwill. Alleluia. And let us pray. Almighty God, you have made this night holy by the gift of your Son, born of the Spirit and of Mary. Let his light shine within our hearts, even more brightly than it shines from the candles in this place. Help us to hear your word and to celebrate your everlasting love through Jesus our Lord. Amen. walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch black land, light has dawned. You have made the nation great. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as those who divide plunder rejoice. As on the day of Midian, you shattered the yoke that burdens them, the staff on their shoulders, and the rod of their oppressor. Because every boot of the thundering warriors and every garment rolled in blood will be burned, fuel for the fire. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of this Lord of heavenly forces will do this. Our psalm tonight is Psalm 96. The responses are printed on your bulletin insert. Let us offer God our pray praise on this holy night. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Share the news of his saving work every single day. Declare God's glory among the nations. Declare his wondrous works among all people. Because the Lord is great and so worthy of praise, he is awesome beyond all other gods. Because all the gods of the nations are just idols, but it is the Lord who creates heaven. Greatness and grandeur are in front of him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord. All families of the nations give to the Lord glory and power. Give to the Lord glory to his name. Bring gifts and enter his courtyards. Bow down to the Lord in his holy splendor. Tremble before him. Tell the nations the Lord rules. Yes, he set the world firmly in place. It won't be shaken. He will judge all people fairly. Let heaven celebrate. Let the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it roar. Let the countryside and everything in it celebrate. And all the trees of the forest too will shout out joyfully.
from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. It educates us so that we can live sensible, ethical, and godly lives right now by rejecting ungodly lives and the desires of this world. At the same time, we wait for the blessed hope and the glorious appearance of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. He gave himself for us in order to rescue us from every kind of lawless behavior and cleanse a special people, people for himself who are eager to do good actions. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax list. This first enrollment occurred when Quinerius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own city to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city, called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage, and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, and wrapped him snugly and laid him in the manger, because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby, Shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you. Wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of heavenly forces was with the angel, praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven, and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what has happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. When they saw this, they reported what had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them fair. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord for the people of Christ. Thanks be to God. Remain standing as we sing hymn number 240.
And will you join as I pray? Holy God, on this night when we remember your advent into the world in your Son, Jesus the Christ, may we who are adults find the joy and the excitement that dwells in the hearts of children. And may we all, in a new and fresh way, receive your gift of redeeming love. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. I bet every one of us has a story about Christmas and our family that we can tell. <laughs> and you know how stories and memories of our family lives are really not static. They're dynamic. Every time we retell a story, we either add a detail, we omit a detail, we change a detail, and somehow the story becomes grander and grander with each telling. And there's always something in that story that we somehow leave out. And the Christmas story or the birth of Christ perhaps is not that different. It's an important story because at the heart of the story is God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But the Gospel of Luke tells that story in another way. It's a story of an unmarried couple under extraordinary circumstances. And the Gospel of Luke tells us where it happened and where it didn't. They tell us, or at least Luke tells us, that the birth was in a manger because that famous line, children who are here with me, you know that famous line, because there was no room in the end. A manger really isn't much as it relates to cradles, especially today. We have a baby among us tonight, and it's amazing to me how cradles have really advanced. But a manger wasn't even a crib or a cradle. It was a feeding stall not the kind of place we would expect for the birth of the Messiah. But as much as we remember that manger, we also remember why Jesus was born there. We remember that when Mary and Joseph got to the end, there was no room for them. Have you ever wondered about the characters at the end? The innkeeper who turned them away? And have you ever realized that the gospel doesn't tell us was it the end of Bethlehem? Or was it the best western of Bethlehem? And even though Christian tradition tells us where the spot is that Jesus was born, we really don't know that that is the actual spot. In fact, sometimes Christians today fight over that sacred spot. I don't really think Jesus would want us to hold fast to the place where he was born. I don't even think he would want us to care about the exact spot where he was born. In fact,
fact, it's not really that important where the location was. But there is something about the story, there is no room in the end about an innkeeper who missed a chance to welcome the Messiah of the world. But it isn't really about what an innkeeper did 2,000 years ago. It's about what God did and what God still does. And it's about what you and I do in response to what God does. Christ still comes into the world. Christmas still happens. It didn't just happen once. It happens all the time. Sometimes Christmas knocks at our doors and we are asked if there is room in our inn. And sometimes we look out and we don't really like what we see. Or we don't like what it would mean to let Christ in. So we close the door and we say, there's no place for you. But sometimes, even when we really don't want to, even when we're not sure we want to open the door up, we do anyway. And that's what matters. Christmas is about the story we read in the Gospel of Luke. It is about Mary and Joseph and the baby in the manger and no room in the inn. But the story teaches us that it's more than an event that happened centuries ago. It teaches us that it's a story about opening ourselves up to what God is trying to do in us. And it's about telling God that even if we don't know what it means yet, there is room in our lives for God and we want to be a part of what God is doing. And there's a good chance that if you're here tonight, some part of you wants to be a part of that. Some part of you wants to be a part of love made real, of God being active in the world. Some part of us that wants to be a part of the Christmas story. I like the creed we'll use in just a few minutes when I finish the creed from the United Church of Canada. By the way, I really grieve that I had to let go of, of the Christmas creed that we've done for years and years for space in the bulletin. But <laughs> I do like the creed we're going to say together because in that creed, it speaks of a God in Christ who is still active in the world today. A God who comes in Christ as the Prince of Peace. A God who is still at work. The worst things we Christians do sometimes is to say it's all summed up and it's done. When in reality, God is still drawing us to God's love. Do you want to be a part of closing the doors? Or do you want to be a part of opening the doors? Scripture tells us that out in the field, shepherds heard that the baby had been born and they got up and rushed to the manger and saw the thing that God was doing in the world. That's where I want to be on Christmas Eve and I expect it's where you want to be as well. 
I want to be in the place where it becomes holy. Not because of who I am or who you are, but because of who Christ is. I want to be a part of that story. It's sometimes easy to forget that the baby born that night grew up and became an adult. And when he did, he was asked what God asked us to do. And he answered in this way. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. And love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, open the door of your heart and let it all in. If Christmas is about the incarnation of God, and this is what God incarnate, that is Jesus, tells us, then that is the ultimate Christian message. And when we put this tree away and the trees in our home, when the Christmas dinner has been eaten and the last piece of fudge has been fought over. <laughs> the ultimate test of how well we have celebrated Christmas this year will not be in what was under the tree or anything we got like that. It will be how well we opened our hearts and let the Christmas message in. May it be so this Christmas and always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. In response to the spoken word, I invite you to take your hymnal, turn in the back, to page number 883. And then I invite you to stand as together we affirm what it is we believe. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating. Who has come in Jesus the word made flesh to reconcile and make new. Who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. And remain standing as we sing our hymn of preparation for Holy Communion, hymn number 250.
prepared to celebrate Holy Communion tonight, that all are welcome at this table of our Lord. And if you come from other traditions, in the United Methodist tradition, we commune children. If you choose not to commune, but want to come forward for a blessing, please cross your hands and you are welcome to come and kneel or stand. Also, if you're unable to receive communion, but would like to receive it, if you're unable to come here to the altar, please let the ushers know that we will come and bring it to you in the pews because we want everyone to know this is God's gift of love to us in this holy feast. I am privileged tonight to uh, celebrate Holy Communion with the Reverend Kim Dodson, who is also my wife. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born, so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And as your word became flesh, born of woman on that night so long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said to them, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ suffering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, 
Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. table of our Lord is prepared and the feast is now ready. Come as the ushers invite you. May there be room in your hearts for Christ and his redeeming grace, and may that love shelter over you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
great children's hymns that Christmas is away in a manger. But actually, Jesus is right here, present with us. Not away, but present here. Go in that knowledge in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. He came down to show us the light, and he was the light. And in him there is no darkness at all. Go forth in this night shining brightly with the love of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's everlasting grace, peace be with you tonight and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the communion of the Holy Spirit keep you now and always. Let us pray. Most gracious God, source of all blessing, we give you thanks for inviting us to share this meal as your family. Strengthen us to be a blessing to all the world, glorifying you in all things. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm not going to give you instructions other than to say you can read the bulletin, but I guess I should maybe give you instructions. But many of you have been here so long that I'm simply going to invite you to stand, turn in your hymnal to page number 239, and we will wait for a little while. The music will play until we get things set up, and then we will begin to sing once we have uh, the sanctuary lighted. So let us stand.
and let us join together as we give witness to the light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Glory to God. Amen. And our closing hymn is hymn number 246. Alexander is smiling and laughing tonight because I'm, we're finished in an hour. <laughs> but here's the good news. God's love is not measured in time. God's love is endless. And God's love came to us and remains with us and stays with us. And may we all leave opening our hearts afresh and anew to the continuing inbreaking of the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remain standing as Ruth comes. <laughs>